Hey guys, today's a rough day with weather. It's, we got a bad storm from that, um, when it hit Texas in the jet stream. But we got the last log for now from our neighbor. This is what we cut. This is the biggest piece so far. The other ones were a little bit smaller than that, or were smaller than this, but right now we're just not milling because, for one, you get this log, this log here, I'll show you how long it is. at least 500 pounds right there so to make this band from here to there we need some hard oak uh, 4 by 4s or something or it's not going to hold up to that because we were pressing our luck doubling these up yesterday but here's Here's roughly what, what you do. Uh, I'll show you what smaller piece of wood. I mean, you could mill anything like this, but... But it'll give you the rough idea how everything's set up. It basically, the log will sit here like this. And I forget the name of these, but they come up like that, and you need to keep them low enough so the saw, bl the bandsaw blade, don't hit it. Oh, a second, I just gotta tighten up a little bit. Like so. And then the log will sit against that, you know. And then normally you would have the log sitting out here, but basically you raise this and then you screw it and you hold the lock. And that rides on. Make sure I drop this back there. And this is your bandsaw mill. That, that's the cutting blade, as you would know. This here, that's the, um, that presses on the blade to take the flex out when you're cutting. And then this adds but, uh, just it's green like that from windshield white fluid use a lot of people use dish soap and water just plain water diesel it makes it sticky so we use just windshield white fluid which a lot of people use because you don't have those problems with it but that's just to keep the blade cool And I probably get better. And then the uh, motor's been upgraded to a 23 horse. And then this tells you how high you are. And then this holds holds it in place so it can't go up and down. And then, as you can see right here, water tank. And you twist, you turn this to go, to raise it up or down. And right there's the throttle. So what we had to do to load them is we ran 
the two by six is doubled up, which we got lucky held, because it was just pine, they're nothing special. For what we we're doing, it, like I said, we were on the biggest one, we we're pressing our lock. And you just put one across there to there. And we had another one up on here. And the short pieces of two by four we had lay on the deck like this. This way it rolls up on air and it's easier to get up onto the uh, other boards to go across. And we had to use the uh, log dog, I'll show that to you in a second, to pick up one end so we slide a chain under it in the middle. We have hooked these. These aren't the um, cheap fenders that you get on like your normal trailers. These things are beefy. So we just hook the chain here. You run it under the log and up. And then what we did was we had uh, two of these. This one's what's called the log dog. Just a handle that comes down to a point and it has another point here that's movable. And basically one man uh, rolls, the other one holds. Or you both roll, one holds and then the other one adjusts, it rolls, and then the other guy, and then you hold, and then he adjusts, he rolls. And then we got it right up on the, um, up on the sawmill. Um, soon we're going to be dropping it to the ground, putting it right on the ground so it's easier to load logs. But... I got a uh, clear spot and do what's called sticker the all the wood we cut. I'll try to do it again. Damn the storm. But basically all you do is see how it hooks? And it grabs with minimal effort and it turns it. And then you keep doing that the same to keep rolling. Just like I said, I got a clear landing here today. Well, in between the rain, so I can start doing what's called stickering. I'll show you that in a second. As I'm, you know, as I'm cleaning, I'll. I'm going to try to find you guys a good spot to put the camera because I don't have, I can't find my tripod. I put it somewhere I just can't remember where. But basically a sticker is just a piece of wood that goes in between the 2 by 4 And then you just put a stack on it, first row. And then you put the second row up and you leave space in between so it can dry. And then you keep doing that stack, you know, you stack your two by fours with two by fours, two by sixes with two by sixes. Out of four of the logs we did were two of them were uh, in between the size of this one and this one and the biggest one was a little bigger than this and these are all two by fours we got out of it cut the lumber you get 
you know, two types of uh, wood. You get the stuff with the bark on the outside, you cut that off first. You get four pieces off of each log. You know, the side, you know, sides, top and bottom. So you're left with a big chunk. And then you measure it up, see what you got. You know, can you get how many two by sixes or four by fours or, and you know, two by twos you can get out, you figure that all out as you're, after you get this stuff done. And sometimes you have boards, thinner boards like these that are still good for sale as planks and you just basically we just throw them up on the mill and we write down there like a um, skill saw which we did here as you can see and we're going to cut these down into the stickers so there's no waste and technically the sawdust there's no waste there either oh well, if we threw a tarp down it would be easier but all the sawdust you see over here is sawdust from all the lumber we cut and these chunks here a lot of this stuff we can get more wood out of like these bigger pieces we get a couple planks out of them and the rest of it will cut down the stickers or we could sell off as you know like uh siding if you wanted to like side your hat of your regular stick built house and make it like look like a wood um cabin you could use on the outside or the inside So today is the day I'm going to take and clean all this area up. This way I can put skids down and start stickering the lumber. So I'm going to find something to stick up on the bed. And then I'll wind up... Um, putting the camera up there since I don't know what the hell I did with my tripods. I have a small one and I got a big one. Don't know what the fuck I did with them. It looks like the storm might be done with hopefully. But as you can see it's kind of circling around so I might get a couple hours I might get only like 10 or 15 minutes so we're gonna see what happens yeah but I'm gonna call the video quits right now until I get everything set up and then you know as I'm doing stuff I'll you know I'll make some video and show you what I'm up to um, I was gonna put the lumber there but that's not going to work out in our favor because I don't have anything to mow with right now. My mowers, my uh, whacker trimmer is down because the uh, pull starts shot and the starter needs to be rebuilt. The lawnmower that we were going to use for the property is down. And I don't have proper testing find out what's going on with it plus it's hard for me to start because of my damn neck and I've been keep trashing my body so I'm on the, not gonna screw around with something unless I have the tools to actually test it see if it's gonna spark or fuel or see what the hell the try to figure out what the problem is so without the right tools it's not worth putting my putting that much um taking that much out of my body just to screw around with some junk i mean i had water in the uh, oil 
and next time I ran it either without oil or with the oil and more mix and they destroyed the motor. The motor might be completely dead. I got to do compression tests on it, spark tests. Because it ran and then it stopped running. I cleaned up the magneto so, you know, if it doesn't have spark, it could be the magneto's dead, which would be a common thing because, I mean, it is an ancient lawnmower, so you don't know how many hours are on it, and most people don't take care of them, maintain them. And then, two, you know, it's, if I'm gonna, you know, if I'm gonna do damage to my body, it's gonna be for a reason. And I don't see any reason screwing around with junk when it's probably not gonna run unless I have the proper diagnostic tool. And I sure in the hell ain't gonna be grabbing spark because I can't. You can use a spark plug, but the spark plug could have a cracked isolator. So it wouldn't show up spark anyways, which is the original plug we got with lawnmower, and that thing was pretty old. So, and there's no sense to invest in a new plug, spark plug. If you know, the thing is just junk. I mean, it's un it, you can't sell it. I mean, it's good enough for around here to destroy, but I mean, you can't sell it to anybody. Once you start getting metal and stuff in it from the crankshaft and God knows where else in the motor, you just basically run it till it dies and then you use parts or you rebuild the motor for something else. But for how cheap lawnmowers are, it's to the point nowadays where it's not worth it unless it's for you and you need a good running fucking mower. Cause when I when I rebuild something, it's built to withstand a beating. You know, I I do what's called balancing and blueprint and everything. Balancing is making sure everything is balanced 100% together. Like most places, when you have a blade sharp and nobody balances the blades, like you're supposed to, or it shakes the shit out of the crank and then it wears your crank out. Yeah, I don't have a balancer. I, mean, I can do it old school, but it, it, it does. It, you can get them close, but I like them fucking dead nuts. Just like you know everything else I do. Like when I bat, when I have motor balance, when I balance motor out, you know I do most of the balancing myself. But then I send it out to a really good machine shop. It usually does race motors, so I can really get the stuff balanced to perfect. You know, most people mix, they take it to a cheap machine shop, have it, you know, balanced good enough, and it's good enough for a street motor, which in most cases is good enough, but for me, I'm a little more picky on how my motors are built. And then blueprinting is pretty much you know, it's making everything down to perfect spec. You know, like, a lot of times you can get over doing what's called rearing in a motor. You just basically, you hone the motor out, which is just basically grinding stones on a drill. And you go down into the bore where the piston goes, up and down with oil until you have what's called which until you see what the uh, until you have honing marks and then you take measurements and you go in reverse and then you get what's called a cross patch because it has like an x pattern to it and one day i'll show you on video when i get a chance to rebuild some equipment and then Yep, I'm hoping either this winter or this spring, depending on money and a lot of things. Right now, money is getting tighter and tighter. 
and you know a lot of work I got a lot of work to do before I can you know worry about that type of shit but for now yeah it looks like we're gonna get back into the lumber business so this comes priority yeah right now Four by fours are expensive. They're, they're about four bucks a piece. So if you look at it there, it's like, what? Let me go count them. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, we got 12 2 8 4, some planks, I'm not sure what they're going for, so that's what, 4, 8, 16, that's like 60 bucks or something like that, and just 2 by 4s, and then we got some other lumber we milled before, but, you know, if we're going to get back, if we're going to do this for a business, we got to get areas cleaned up and we got more, we got some more logs coming to us when our neighbor's ready. It's mostly all pine, so, I mean, if they were like oak or something, it would be a hell of a lot more. Like, um, eight foot, four by fours now. Are going for like and they're junk ones because they're all uh, kiln dried not you know everything is rushed nothing's ever checked like you're supposed to bring it down to eight percent humidity or um, dryness of the wood I gotta get a uh, tester for it it's got two prongs on it, and it gives you a read out of the percentage of the moisture in the wood. Because we're not just going to sell, you know, uncured wood. Or you wind up with Home Depot wood, which you got to go through half the pile to find, hopefully, a straight 2 by 4 I, I, I pissed the guys off at Lowe's one day. I was building my uh, iguanas cage, and that thing was four foot wide, six foot high, eight foot long, and I went through three quarters of their pile just to find a straight two by four, or two by two, because they were all twisted up. I mean, it looked like, you know, you took a sock and put it in a ringer, because it was improperly dried. So, like I said, we do shit, we do it right. You know, we don't screw around with stuff. So, yeah, like, I want to make sure this area is cleaned up, get rid of all this, you know, dig up these, all this type of shit so everything's nice, clean, and dry. We don't have to worry about weeds growing up, hitting the bottom, causing moisture problems. I'm going to put some pallets down. This way, when we have a whole full stock, we can come in with a forklift, just pick them up, take them, put them in a different spot, and they're ready to sell next year. Because uh, we naturally dry them, we don't kill them, dry them. This way, everything's good and dry uh, correctly. When you kill them, dry them a lot of times, it, um, it dries uh, faster on the outside than it will the insides. I mean, the insides grow, uh, dry faster than the outsides because the outside's always going to be more uh, moist. Or the other way around, I forget mine. I'm not thinking too straight today. I think the, yeah, I think the outside's dry faster than the insides. So, 
you know, we're going to be working on this. The old man's teaching me the business. I mean, he's been doing it for over 70 years. He's been doing, he's been in the business between sawmills and, you know, cutting trees down. You know, not like these little sticks like that. I mean, that was probably, like, that was probably the small log back then. And so, you know, we're gonna, I got a lot to learn, and he's gonna teach me. It's not healthy for me, it's not nice, but it's part of the education. The more I can learn, the more, you know, I can pass, just like, he wants to pass this knowledge on to me. And Troy. And, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes, no matter how bad it hurts, and how bad I shouldn't be doing it, the risk to my health, but the way I look at it is if I'm gonna fucking die, I'm going out, you know, doing fucking work like a real man. Yeah, you know, I'm not the kind of person to just sit back, do what doctors tell me, and fucking lay down and die, and take a bunch of painkillers and pills. That, that doesn't work in my family. Never has, everyone, you know, like all the old timers in my family died from heart attacks. You know, the doctor told them to sit down in a fucking rocket chair just like the old man and not do nothing. You sit there in a rocking chair and rot away. Nah. You know, I grew up with the old timers. We died doing work. If it wasn't fucking just working, we had a tool in our hand usually. Then, our final fucking retirement is the grave. Yeah. Once you stop working, that's when your health just deteriorates quick. Uh, we can't do it. Some people can, but people like us, it can't ever happen. Like I said, I'm suffering through heart attacks and all kinds of fucking bullshit this year from doing what I'm doing. But I'd rather die doing this than rotting away in a chair. That's just the way it is. I mean, yeah, I'm back to drinking a fucking more than I like, but it's not like I'm getting hammered. Like last night, throughout the night, I did six shots. You know, I take one, just enough to, you know, to relax you a little bit, but not enough to get you hammered where, you, you know, you can't function. You know, you just feel, you know, I haven't been drinking in two years, so it doesn't take me much to relax. You know, I still could, I could still, you know, pound back another two or three shots, but I limit myself. I don't, you know, I, I can take it after the pain after that. You know, I only take as drink as much as I have to to make the pain dull down enough where it's standable. Doesn't take it all away, but that's not what I'm looking to do. I'm just looking to make the pain tolerable. And plus, you know, drinking 90%, 90 per fucking whiskey, that shit's been tearing my stomach up, forcing food. And plus, I'm forcing myself to eat more than I normally do, so that's tearing me up. But, you know, it's all part of the game. Um, as you can see, the storm's about to hit again, so I'm gonna go put the camera inside, upload this video to my computer. Yeah, as you can see, it circle, keeps circling from the uh, jet stream. Storms just keep coming in. You get sun for a little bit and then rains for a bit. So, I'm going to go get you guys set up, ready, so when I'm ready to come out here and do video, 
of actually doing a lot of work. Everything set up. Cause it could pour any minute. So I'll talk to you guys in a little while. Like I said, you know, it all depends on the storm. If the storm hits later on, they I actually got the parts chainsawed today. It was over at the old man's place, and we finally remembered to grab it. It took a few months, but as you can hear, the wind's kicking up. So I know that storm's about to hit. And I gotta bring the log dog in. So in case it does pour, it doesn't get burned. I mean, a little rain out won't hurt, but I don't like my tools out in the rain. Well, it's not mine, it's the old man's, but still. I'm borrowing them so I can do the videos and clean up around here, plus we're you know, we're out here working. Only makes sense to keep it on the property instead of in the back of the truck, so. Keep it in the shop. And we always got them over here. And then this is the part saw I need. So I can fix the other chainsaw. And I gotta get my place cleaned up in between rainstorms. Cause this is my workshop, so I mean, that's why I call it my, well, it's technically the old man's place, but I call it mine because I'm the only one that works in here. And I keep all the shit, you know, we use stored in here, and, you know, I'm here all the time working. Because I got nothing better to do, plus, you know, I want to learn business from the old man. I got the time. No. We might wind up getting the, uh, he was thinking about buying a load of logs. So. That's why I want to really start getting the stuff going. Because if we wind up getting a load of logs, then we got to be ready to rock and roll. We can't be, you know, we got to be able to throw the stickers down. Throw the lumber down and keep sawing. But that's basically what I'm up to. Just working the land. And, you know. He's got a lot of contacts. We can get back into doing firewood. You know, once we start getting set stuff set up, I got mowers to work, I got the big tractors to work on, then we're gonna bring, we'll go get some more, so, you know, like I said, there's a lot of work to get done, oh yeah, and then another thing I'll probably wind up showing you, I'll probably wind up doing this eventually, so I got a belt sander, I'll put in the, I'll turn it upside down and put it in the vise. Today just hasn't been a good day for me, the old man. Everything's fighting this weather, freaking aggravation, weather. But we got an axe handle today for a dollar. We had noticed it was already broke. As you can see at the end. Rest of the handle's fine. And as you can see, part just slides in there is broke off so what I can do is I can take the belt sander and sand it down use it like a uh, belt sander so it fits in there the broke piece in there has what's called a wedge it's a piece of steel we try to pound it out like you normally would but it wouldn't come out we're trying to use a regular small um you know hammer the, uh, we don't have a framing hammer which is a heavier hammer and we couldn't find out where the hell the uh mini the three pound mini sledge went to 
I know well, we know we put it in the truck in case we need it, but now we don't remember we don't know where the hell it went from there. It could be in the over at his place or something. But you know, we're getting old, we're both not well, so you know that type of stuff happens. So like I said, I'll, I'll go get this. I'll go get this video loaded up, and then, you know, depending on if the weather permits, I'll do more video today. And if not, or me and the old man might get into something else, we never know. We always figure something out. But there's a lot to do and too much work, not enough hours in the day, you know how it is. But we'll get it all done eventually. Yeah. You know, like I said, you know, eventually, you know, if we can get some people out here that want to learn, you know, we can't afford to pay anybody right now because right now we're, you know, just starting off and doing this stuff again. So any lumber we sell this year won't be ready for at least six months to next summer, you know, depending on, you know, weather, how dry it gets, you know, a lot of factors involved. So we're not counting on selling anything we do this winter until next year. But we need to stockpile first before we can worry about selling. So selling the lumber is the easy part. Getting it correctly, you know, dried and that that's where the, the that's the hardest part. So you know, for now like I said, you know, the sun looks like the sun's trying to come back out, but with the way the clouds are looking and circling, looks like the storm's about to hit again. You know, the sun comes out for a couple minutes and then it pours. So I'll see what I can get done in between and what I can get video on. So. I'm hoping to make some more videos today, and like I said, by the time you guys see this, this will, you know, a lot of these videos will be a couple months old. So, yeah, it is what it is. Well, I'll talk to you guys later on. All right, bye.